Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to study about gate-induced drain leakage current. Why we need to study gate-induced drain leakage? The GIDL current or GIDL current is predominant when we scale down the tech nodes in silicon. Basically, when we move from higher technology nodes to the lower tech nodes, 45 nanometers and below, we see that guidal current is predominant in the device due to shrinking of the transistor size. Okay. So le let's try to understand with the example of NMOS and MOSFET. So there are two conditions, the device off condition and on condition and threshold voltage is less than the, when gate to source voltage is less than the threshold voltage v and VDS is zero, there will not be any current between the drain and the source. ID is zero, right? Even in the second case, when VGS is less than V threshold with VDS greater than zero, there shouldn't be any current, right? Because we didn't satisfy the condition of threshold voltage with respect to gate to source voltage. Now, if we consider the case three, VGS is greater than V threshold and VDS is also positive. So in this case, there would be some current flowing in the transistor and that is from drain to source. But if you look at the condition two, technically we shouldn't have any current, right? But that's not the reality. We see some current even though device is in off state. Ideally, the device must be off. Okay. And there shouldn't be any current. But there is some kind of current and one of them is gate-induced drain leakage current. Okay. So we can divide the concept of guidal current into three parts. The first requirement is VGS must be less. When VGS is less than V threshold, the device must be off. And we have certain VDS, right? When VDS is positive, it creates electric field between the drain and the gate. Okay. There are two ways to look at it. One is we can draw the diode model. Since if you draw the diode model of it, what we have here is positive, negative. And since drain is at higher potential, it will, this diode is reverse biased. Similarly, we have a PN junction diode at this point, okay, here. And that will, again, will be, that will also be reverse biased when we apply drain voltage higher than the gate voltage, right? Drain is, potential is higher than the gate, right? Now, what happens here is, this is insulator, right? There is there shouldn't be any current flowing through it, but it has. If you look at the crystal structure of insulator, it will have positive and negative compact together within the lattice. So if you want to give the energy or make the electrons and whole pair out of the crystal lattice, we need to supply some kind of energy. And that is done by electric field, which is developed due to the potential difference between the drain and the gate here, okay? So in crystal lattice, we have here positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative inside, okay? And so on everywhere, okay? But when we apply electric field, these lattice gets polarized. Basically, this gets polarized in a way that we could see like this electrons this side and positive side positive negative positive negative as we know that electrons move in the direction of electric field sorry in the direction opposite to the electric field so electric field is from positive to negative so the electrons would be moving from this side to this side right so this presence of electric field between the drain and gate creates a overlap area beneath the gate, okay? 
and or you can say at the interface of gate and the drain below the below the gate okay so this area initially we have this is our drain n plus drain now this changes to like this okay so this area is depleted of charge carrier and as we increase the potential difference at potential at drain this ion breaks okay due to polarization and we get here beneath this this layer we get electrons and hole pair okay so this breaks into electrons and holes and we get a generation we get electron and hole pair at the interface of gate as well as at and the drain okay so we have electrons and holes okay now here as well we'll get a depletion region okay so this is one of the depletion regions and another is here so we have two depletion region one is between the substrate and the drain and other is below the gate at the interface of drain and the gate so we can say this is drain gate overlap area so in that overlap area there is generation of electron hole due to the electric field present because of potential difference between the drain and the gate now as we increase the potential these now these electrons and hole the electrons will move into the drain and holes go into the substrate okay so as we know that the direction of conventional current is from positive to negative so therefore the drain current flows from leakage current flows from drain to source substrate sorry so gidl current is basically the current that flows from the drain to the substrate in the presence of electric field developed due to the potential difference between the drain and the gate okay now if you look at the the curve of id versus log of drain current versus vgs what we expect is something like this let's say vgs equals vt and this is the point where vgs is less than vt right this is for vds equals 0.05 volt okay now when we increase the vds let's say 1.1 volt what happens here this is the condition to now we expect the graph to be something like this and we expect it to go down towards zero or the origin right but that's not the case here as we can see there is certain current in the case 2 when vgs is less than v threshold with some vds the actual graph goes like this so there is increase in the current even when vgs is less than v threshold due to gate induced drain leakage okay that's why there is some power consumption even when we expect device to be in off state now we can also look at the energy band diagram of gidl so for the equilibrium condition which is the case 1 we have vds 0 no drain current and vgs less than v threshold let's say this is fermi level ef valence band conduction band and we have again valence band and the conduction band this is the condition when we have vds is 0 and vgs less than v threshold now we when we increase the vg uh, vds to let's say 1.1 volt here it is q times vdd that is 
because the maximum voltage we can have at v drain is VDD, right? Now, as we can see from the curve that there is some common area band, common band, when valence band and here in this curve. So what happens here? We have electrons in the valence band. When we increase the potential, the, the drain voltage, these electrons drift from this band to another band. So the, basically here, the movement of electron from one band to another band is nothing but band to band tunneling. So electrons tunnels through this band to another band due to increase in the slope of this curve, right? Because of applied electric field, okay? And this is known as band to band tunneling. The graph gets steeper as we increase the voltage at the drain, keeping the gate voltage same or fixing the drain voltage and reducing the gate voltage. So finally, the idea is having the higher potential. If the potential difference between the drain and the gate increases, the graph gets steeper and we have the more common in the band between these two bands. And therefore, it's easy for electrons from valence band to tunnel into the conduction band of this side. Okay, so that's all about gate induced drain leakage. Hope you find found this information helpful and insightful. See you again in the next video. Thank you.